and it changes. I'm going to start this. Everybody can hear this if they're listening later. It we're... changes the um, the language of the website to ch to Spanish, but it, they're simple enough words that you can figure out what it is you're doing, and you can just browse the um, books that they have in Spanish. There are not very many, but they're picture books. So, but they're also words, so it helps you hear. Um, someone speaking the language while you're reading it. And for those of you who are um, more at my level, <laughs> picture books work just great for me. Picture works are great for everybody. Yeah. And, and I will include that link, Linda, gracias. Uh, I will include that link in the email that goes out to everybody. So okay. if, if, you know, if, if you're the type of person that you say, oh my God, I can't copy that and stick it on, I already have, so. <laughs> And if, anyone has any, for you. if anyone has any questions about accessing this resource, just let me know. Um, yeah. I'll be happy I'll, to help. Okay. Muy bien. Gracias, Linda. Gracias. Uh, okay. Uh, muy bien, muy bien. Vamos a practicar hoy. Uh, muy buenos días. I did start the recording so that people who are absent can watch later because we've always got a decent number of folks who are doing that. Y bienvenidos, bienvenidas. Uh, welcome to everybody. Uh, and y vamos a, vamos a practicar hoy. Vamos a estudiar un poquito hoy. Uh, voy a tomar las preguntas que ustedes tienen. I'm going to take the questions that you guys have um, and we'll go in a kind of sort of order, but things may feel like they're going in about five different directions just because I'm sure there are going to be a lot of little questions along the way. So if whenever you have a question, make sure you ask, do not be shy because, uh, ooh, I give you an issue. So, um, because generally, if you have a question, you think you're the only one and somebody else is being silent and too shy to ask. So always do ask. That is the absolute truth. If one person has a question, that means three or four other people have that same question usually, but they're too shy to ask. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, yeah, eso pasa. That happens. So um, we're, we're going to go back to some general review of things. We're going to continue with a little bit of this definite article practice today, just to give you in a big picture today. Uh, we're going to do a little more with the definite article practice. Um, I would say don't get hung up on it. Uh, do know that we use a definite article more in Spanish than we do with English. And the question usually comes up, well, how do I know if I use it or not? Well, if in doubt, you know, use it. If you know, because a lot of times you're only going to have a feel for this. And if you have a feel for it, you should go with that gut feeling. If your feel is, don't use it like buenos dias. You don't say buenos los dias. Because you've heard buenos dias a gazillion times. And that's what I mean. Your feel for it is you've heard buenos dias a gazillion times. And that means, yes, that's correct. That's the pattern you should use. Never buenos los dias, no. Or los buenos dias, no. It's just buenos dias, right? So what, what you have heard, if you have a feel that something is right, it's because probably your brain has already processed that it knows that sequence of words. So don't stress over the articles, but there are definitely times when we do use an article in Spanish and, uh, and that will be the opposite from the pattern you're used to in English. So that's kind of what we want to focus on today. And I'm gonna have some new resources for you to look at uh, with this. And we're going to do practice with this um, eventually. So, okay. Um, I'll, I'll lots of things with the, also we're going to have some, um, practice with talking about prices, uh, reviewing some number issues. So one thing I had asked you to do was to, um, find, uh, save a receipt and I'm going to share my screen to show you what I mean. It can be any kind of crummy crappy old receipt, crumpled up, stuffed in the bottom of your purse. I don't care what state it is. Please don't show your 
credit cards, by the way, on the screen. Don't do that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I've got some things saved. So you're going to see where we're, I'll, cause I'm going to start off with some examples. So whatever, so I had asked you, Oh, save some little receipt, whether it's a credit card receipt and don't show it on the screen again, or, you know, something that you can read off of, right. Um, uh, something you can read prices off of. We're going to do a little more practice with that. And I'll show you with some examples we're going to have here. We're going to have, grocery stuff and ooh, an expense report stuff to look at as my examples. And then I'm going to send you off into some Zoom rooms to practice with that. Because we can always use some extra practice on um, talking about numbers. That is always a useful thing to come back to and practice again. You know, just because you've practiced something, uh, you know, a couple weeks, three months ago, doesn't mean it's going to come back like that, you know, because that's not the way the human brain works. If you feel like, gosh, I feel rusty. Well, okay. Eres normal. You're normal. Congra Felicitaciones. Congratulations. When uh, we are in their twenties, that's probably it can happen. Yeah, uh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. That you're, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and you know what? Don't shortchange yourself. Cause even with, you know, I have, most of my experience throughout my life has been with, you know, 15 to 18 year olds where everything should come and it doesn't always. So <laughs> even if you think, oh, you know, a younger was better, it's nah, not always. So, um, but have that handy, have that little receipt handy. Again, you're not going to show on the screen. You're going to, you know, read from it and do some practice with it. And, um, and uh, uh, we'll do that later on today with uh, our, our second breakout room uh, for practice. Um, I'm probably gonna give the no more newbie people some different videos to watch than the uh, more seasoned folks, but um, we'll get to all of that in good time. And uh, Nora, uh, se separately, Nora, I promise you, I will get back to you on your email about books because it's kind of a weighty question. Oh, yeah, yes, yeah, later, personally, because I have some insights on that. Okay, uh, vamos a ver. What we're going to start off with very first is that, uh, for most of you, I asked you to get a little booklet to read. If you have, I always like to start off with, if you have any questions on the whatever chapter it is you read for this week, and the chapter can be anything about, well, this word seems weird. Why do they use this? Or this combination of one, two, three words strung together. I know I read the definition, but that doesn't make any sense to me. Any chronic, qu chronic question you have out of whatever book it is that you are reading, if you've got a little book, now is your time to ask. And when I pregunta, sometimes we have a ton of questions. Sometimes you're like, no, todo está bien. Nora, dime. And you'll have to take your, oh, you're off. I, okay. I put something over in the chat. I'm, I'm reading from the time of the trip of your life. Ah, sí, el viaje de su vida, okay. And they're in the dining room and this woman is smiling at them, I think is what that is trying to say. That oh, she, and I don't see that it. She in the smiles chat. at them. Hmm. You got it in the chat. I don't see it in the chat. Why is that? That's curious. No. Well, my internet went off for a little bit, and I had to sign back in. So maybe it Ooh, got lost. it got lost somewhere. Okay. So here's here's the sentence. Ella le sonríe. Ah, ella le sonríe. Sonríe, yeah. I'm going to put it up here. Does this look right to you, Nora, in the chat yes, room? Yes, but the, it was Ellie, yes, that she was, to, it was plural. She was smiling oh, was, at them, I think, but I get uh, Well, a yes would be they. Ellie, yes. A yes. Oh. If, no, if it, it was just she, a uh, L E S. Sonríe. Oh, les, okay. Yes. I am correcting this. Okay, now look at the go. chat box, the last one. That's it. A, uh, or, perdón, it should not be ellas, perdón, I'm sorry. Ellas, ella les sonríe. Wow, I lied again. I'm sorry, it's the very That's last it. of those three. <laughs> perdón. Mm -hmm. Ella le, that one in the middle is totally wrong. Uh, 
Ella les sonríe. Ella les sonríe. Okay. Uh, let's just take a little whiteboard to look at this for everybody to make it maybe a little easier to see. Ella les sonríe. Um, okay. And this is something, uh, oh, and I keep doing ellas. Why am I doing that? Ella les sonríe. Um, word order is something that can vary a lot in many, many different languages, okay? And in English, we are used to this idea, subject, uh, subject, verb, object, right? That, that's, that's sentence structure wise, because this is the big, big uh, uh, topic of sentence structure. English general word order tends to be subject, that means whoever is doing something, verb, the thing, the action they are doing, and object. Some verbs lend themselves to having an object, some do not. Uh, she smiles at them. The object thing tells about a, a, a noun that receives that action of, of the verb. Right. But that's our word order in English. And fortunately, in Spanish, that generally, generally is very, very close. You know, usually you have a subject, you tell the who, or we might omit the subject in Spanish, as you well know. The verb, which is a complicated part because it has to go into a special form and it tells who does the action and object. However, in this case, we have a little slight departure. Ella is the subject that says she, okay. Ooh, this lace, we're gonna come back. This is what they call an indirect object. An indirect object is a person or thing that receives the action of the verb, but well, kind of indirectly. Uh, and sonríe, here's our verb. Okay, so the verb sonríe, it's any, oh, it ends in a naked vowel. That comes from a verb called sonreír, uh, which means to smile. Okay, so when you've got a naked vowel here hanging off the end, uh, uh, you know that only one person is doing that action when it's just got a vowel hanging off the end. And here, oh, we only have one person doing that action. So that makes sense. Ella sonríe. Who was doing it? Ella, she. They shortened it to a pronoun. Sonríe, sonríe. But now we've got this troublesome word, les. And the les is actually the object. So it's kind of breaking this pattern of subject, verb, object. It's subject, object, verb. In Spanish, where you would say, uh, where we would say in English, she, is smiling at them, at, at them. Less is the at them. Less is the at them. But in Spanish, the word order is that when I have at them, that's a little stubby little pronoun. It's a little shorty word. Pronouns are shorty words. Ah, yeah. you, him, her, but now, it's not telling who does the action. It's telling who Receive action. receives that action of being smiled at, at them. And the way to say at them is, or at them or to them, also can mean to them, also can mean for them, is that little word less. And whereas we would say in English, she is smiling at them, in Spanish, it has to be put in the order of she at them is smiling. That's just the word order they use. When we have a pronoun, the little shorty words that stand in to represent a group of people or a person, that little object 
pronoun, object pronoun, receiving the action of smiling has to be in front of the verb. Okay. So it becomes ella les sonríe. Okay. He at them is smiling. And the little less means at them. Okay. I'm going to show you another kind of example that you hear a lot that uses this word le, less. And if you hear it as singular, le, with no s at the end, it means instead of at them, it would mean at him or at her. Okay. So here's another similar thing. Uh, ella. Les dice. Right. Dice is this active blah, 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 blah. I'm talking about all these things and no one even cares. Okay. Dice is that action, talking, telling, actually, more more specifically, dice is telling. I thought it just happened with dice. Yeah. Because we saw that in our other book, but it's always. And I'll show you some examples where you'll typically hear this. Okay. You know, like a 15 minute conversation, you'll hear one of these kinds of things. She to them is telling. And by the way, how can you remember that dice means telling or saying? Um, and I'm gonna put saying in parentheses here because they see it can also mean to say. Uh, diction. Someone's diction oh. is the way they, our fancy word diction comes from the mm -hmm. same thing that decir comes from. Okay, so a lot of these Spanish words, there'll be a fancy word that we don't use very much in English, except if we're reading stuff or you're hearing somebody giving a formal speech. Yeah, that's, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, ella les dice. She says something to them. It doesn't tell what she is saying. It tells to whom she is saying it. That's why we've got the word less, to them. Or you might say, oh, la mama les compra. She is, for them, buying. Mm. Mom is buying. La mama les compra dulces. Mom is buying them candies. Okay. Uh, yes. Um, I'll look for it now when I see yeah. I'm reading. Whenever you see, and, and le would just mean this many people gets it instead of, yeah, you know, a bunch, right? So the le would just make it a onesie person, right? Okay. Uh, so. Does that make sense? It does. Thank but you. You will often hear this word le, singular, or les, plural, in front of a verb. And where we say buys them candy, tells them, or says to them, or smiles at them, uh, the word order in Spanish will be a little bit different. The at them part or the at him or at her part, le with no S at the end, will come in front of the verb. And that's not what we're used to. That's not the order of the words in English, but it is the way they put the words in order in Spanish. Make sense? See? Yeah, see. Sí. Okay. Fantastico. Um, or, ooh. Un ejemplo más, one example more, because this is a really common. Um, uh, 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 el policía, the cop. Ha! El policía, le, and I'm going to make it a singular now, le da una multa. The cop gives, a ticket. gives mm -hmm. yeah. Him or, ooh, you know, that word le is kind of fuzzy. It might also mean her. Le can be either feminine or masculine. It does not get a gender. The cop gives him or gives her a ticket. Multa is a ticket, a fine, a ticket, okay? So uh, with, with verbs like um, sonreír, like decir, like comprar, buying, like dar, giving, 
something to somebody. We often say that you're doing this to a human being. And when they do that, that little pronoun in, be in front of the give, to them gives, to, for them buys, to them says, to them smiles. Yeah, I know. Okay, so if you don't hear a le or a les, it, the little word before da or, or, or before compra or before dice or before sonríe might be a me, meaning they're doing it to me, might be a te, meaning they're doing it to you, might be a nos, meaning they're doing it to us, might be a le, they're doing it to him or to her, or might be doing it to them, les. Those will be the little pronouns that you will hear. Okay, and instead of going after the verb, the action word, they'll typically come in front. So that's where that comes from. See? Okay. Vale? Bien. And you will see those, that, those little pronouns paired up with all different kinds of verbs. Bueno, hay otra pregunta. Any other question from what you read? You got something. Sí, Diana, dime. Um, I sent, I think I sent. I have to say, uh, I ran into this construction twice this week, and I have two questions. Ventaja is advantage. It's yes. feminine. Yes. The, and, but they've lopped off the end. Why? Why is that gran there? Exactly. That is your question. Okay. That, yes. Facil, facil. That's easy. Wow. That's an easier question than... Nora's question. Okay, so uh, let's get to that. Una gran ventaja. Um, there are certain uh, there are certain adjectives, certain ones. You just have to know which ones they are. Una gran ventaja, which means a great uh, advantage. The word ventaja means an advantage. Desventaja is a disadvantage. Actually, that's a good word to know. Desventaja, when we put des in front of that, it means disadvantage. Uh, okay. Uh, the question that Yama has is, why do we have that word gran there? It looks like it's a chopped off thing. Wait a minute. Una ventaja, an advantage. Oh, well, it's a sobio. A sobio is very obvious that it is a feminine word because we have una and ventaja. What happened to grande? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. One thing that you need to know is that uh, grande is one of a group of words where if we take that word and we stick it in front of the thing, the noun, it gets truncated. Always, Good. and it does All, not show, always. does not, yeah. Always. So, uh, and in this sense, it will generally, when we take grande and we put it in front of a noun, it changes the meaning from big in size to great. Uh, okay. Mm. Uh, so, uh, un gran hombre, mm -mm. Uh, a great man. Una gran mujer, a great woman. Okay. Um, so that happens when we've got a onesie thing. Grande is one of those small group of words that gets truncated. Another one that gets truncated sometimes is actually bueno, maybe truncated to buen, buen. People may say buen día. Good day. That was Wendy, the second, huh? second part of my question. What other words are I know I know Buen. Yeah. How, how many of those are there? Um a handful. Uh a handful, a handful. Uh I will Diana um find for you the area in the book where they talk about it so you can reference that because I think they're going to give some words like that. And it'll be a, a, but I have to look up which page it is. Okay. I think there is a little reference to it here. And grande is, one, is a word that won't go masculine, feminine, but 
Uh, the word uh, bueno, for example, if that becomes feminine, you can't just yeah, truncate yeah. it. Yeah, you can't do that, but you can with gran. Um, okay. Another word that does that is primero, first. Oh. El primer hombre oh. que viajó al espacio. The first man who traveled to space. Uh, tercero, third will truncate to, you know, um, Jose es el tercer uh, miembro del mm -hmm. grupo. He's the third member. So there is a small group of words in Spanish uh, and they, these words are adjectives, descriptive words that sometimes truncate, chop off part of the word only when it comes in front. So, you know, that's, as you know, not real frequent, right? Uh, most adjectives come behind the noun, not in front of the noun. But when an adjective comes in front of the noun, there's a small group of them that does get small. Okay. Es buena pregunta. And I'll, I'll direct you to the page. It'll give you like a fuller list of those. So Marilyn, um, un gran hombre means a great man. Si. Un hombre grande, with Changes the, the meaning. Big man, right? Yes. A big man. Spe Un hombre grande. Un hombre grande means he is tall, possibly wide this way, but mm -hmm. maybe not. Yeah. Grande refers to size. He's a, a, a yeah, a okay. big great. man. A big man, but not necessarily great. Um. Uh, eh, eh, es un programa de uh, gran importancia. It's a it's a program of great importance. Great, mm -hmm. yeah. But grande, you always hear grande to mean big in size, and if it means big in size. It will be like this hanging out behind the noun it talks about. If it means big in size, when you flip that word and you truncate it and you flip it in front of the noun, it changes the meaning to great, important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, okay. That kind of change in meaning. There are some nouns that do that. CC Cindy, name it. Just a quick question. Um, this was in the video, and since you've got it up here, buen dia. They said, <clears throat> tenga buen dia. And I keep saying, tenga un buen dia. Buen dia. Ah, just buen dia, yeah. When you're okay. talking to people, yeah. Uh, have a good day. Ten que tenga buen dia. Que tenga okay. buen dia. And yeah, people say that all the time to say, have a nice, like we say, have a nice day. Que tenga yeah, we would say, have a nice day. Yeah. Uh, often, que tenga buen día, que tenga buen día, sí. And, and people often use buen día as a retort. Ah, buenos días, mm, buen día. Okay, thank yeah. you. You know, they may do that. It's just what they do when they okay. respond. <laughs> That's it. These are all good questions though. You know, there are, there are normal patterns that, that people use to talk. Okay, bien. Jim. Sí. Oh, sí, Jim, dime. So I just wanted to mention a nice feature of my book. I got Don Quixote. Oh, then, wow. Muy avanzado. You got a more advanced one. Okay. And um, I'm much better at reading things and understanding them than listening to them. So I wanted to be able to listen better. And a nice feature of this book is it's also an audio book. So when oh, you, get it, you have the ability to listen. So if ah. you have listening it's a good it's a good thing to have my edition of that is older and does not have that wow the advances they are making okay gracias jan thank you and that is a fun little book that jan has because it has both a present and a past so you read mm -hmm. the exact same story all told as like you know he is doing this. He's walking into the town. He sees people in the tavern. And then you see it as, oh, he went to the town. He saw people in the tavern. And yeah. So that's. What is the title of again of that book, Jen? Uh, Don Quixote 
Uh, Don Quixote, el último caballero. Uh, Don Quixote, the last night. Okay. K-N-I-G-H-T. The last night, the last cavalier, the last night in shining armor, that kind of night. Okay. Not last night. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Don Quixote is, a um, for those who may not know, was the very first modern novel in the world. It's considered that. Uh, Don Quixote is a very long, like seven, 800 page novel. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Is that the one that you're reading, Jen? Uh, yeah, <laughs> you, you, you only read it when you, yeah, when, when you are, are getting into a, a, you know, pretty high level, but they, they always have uh, wow. okay. certain versions. Yeah, Don Quixote is a very classic story. Uh, it's got sort of many metaphysical things, which we won't get into today. Okay. Medical fish, metaphysical questions. What is sanity? What is insanity? What is right? What is wrong? What is noble? What is stupid? <laughs> what is the nature of man? Yeah, that's all wrapped up into Don Quixote. It's one of those kind of things. Okay. Uh, muy bien. Vamos a ver. Vamos a ver. So, you had some videos to watch just for storytelling. Did those go pretty well? Okay. Uh, the little stories that you had to listen to, you have the little story of um, the mouse, el, el raton. Uh, you had that little story that is just designed for you to follow along with the story. It is not necessary when I give you little stories like this, para que sepan, so you know, it is not necessary that you understand every word, word for word. What you want to do is be able to listen to a story and get the gist, get the basic idea of the story. And if you don't catch every single detail, that is okay. Uh, the point of this is to try to get you used to hearing Spanish uh, with words in their normal order. So you start to hear the patterns over and over again. So if you listen to that and feel like, well, I'm frustrated, I don't know every word, they try to define a lot of the words, but they won't define all of them. But the important thing is for you, there is great value, believe it or not, for listening to the order that words come in. Because the more you hear that natural pattern, the more when you hear it again, you will start to recognize this is the way, the order the words are supposed to be in. Okay, so that is the purpose of um, videos like that. Uh, you're supposed to be able to follow the general story, not understand every single word. Okay. Uh, lo que vamos a hacer. What we're going to do is review some things. And uh, we also have a video. I'm leaving this up here. You had a whole list of things, and I asked you to watch the last half of this later on. The first half was actually more important. What we're looking at is ways that we use articles in Spanish where we may not use it that exact way in English, okay? So sometimes when you need to remind yourself, oh, go ahead and use el, la, los, las, in Spanish. You wouldn't in English in this situation, but you should in Spanish. That's our focus with this. So we worked last week on telling time, on a little on discussing things in general. We're going to do more of that to start off. And days of the week. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the things in the bottom half of that list that he gave us, okay? These are going to be situations where we do use the word the in Spanish, but English, probably you won't bother with it. So you have to get used to that pattern being done. Okay, I am going to give you some examples just to uh, back up a step. And I am going to use, uh, I am going to put up for you a little screen with days of the week. Days of the week are a thing. When we want to say on a day of the week, we don't bother with the word on at all. 
we omit in Spanish the word on and the word el is going to be in there instead, or it might shift into the plural los. And the only difference is that los will indicate regularly, always on that day, okay? Uh, more than one, all of them in general, as opposed to just on a certain day. So, okay, voy a hablar. I'm gonna give you some examples of days of the week para repasar, to review, para repasar, in order to review. Tenemos aquí clase, bueno, escuchen bien, escuchen bien, listen well. Tenemos los días de la semana, los días de la semana, the days of the week, ¿sí? Lunes, Monday, lunes, uh, martes, miércoles, jueves, viernes, sábado, domingo. Spanish calendars tend to start with the day Monday instead of the day Sunday. So, lunes, martes, miércoles, jueves, viernes, sábado, domingo. Um, if, if I just say, and I'm going to say this as a caveat, if I just say today is Monday, I don't use el lunes. Hoy es lunes. Hoy es lunes. Mañana es martes. Sí, eh, el día siguiente es miércoles. If I use hoy es, and the clue is hoy es, today is, hoy es, today is. Uh, with that verb ser, we're not, we're not going to use the el, no. But I am going to use el to say things like this. And none of these are going to use S. So, fíjense, notice. Uh, bueno, el lunes, el lunes, el lunes, tengo clase a las 10. On Monday, I have class at 10. On Monday, and I'm just talking about this Monday, el lunes, tengo clase a las 10. Uh, but now I'm going to switch it to los lunes, and now it's going to say every Monday. Los lunes, los lunes, lavo ra, la ropa. Lavo la ropa. Lavo la ropa los lunes. And now I'm not just saying on one Monday, but I'm saying every single Monday. I'm saying it's a habit. Uh, lavo, lavo. Lavo la ropa, lavo la ropa los lunes. I wash clothes on Mondays, all of them. It's a habit. So instead of el lunes, on Mon if I just said el lunes, it would mean this particular Monday, okay? On Monday. But on Mondays, plural, becomes los lunes. Los lunes, lavo la ropa. Bueno, um, a ver. Uh, Los martes, los martes on Tuesdays, los martes uh, preparo una pizza. Preparo una pizza. I prepare, I fix a pizza. Oh, and now I'm going to stick a les in. Uh, los martes les preparo una pizza. Para mis hijos. I fix them a pizza, and the them I fix it for is para mis hijos, for my kids. Bien? That's who I'm doing it for. Los martes les preparo una pizza. I fix them a pizza. Bueno, um, el, el viernes, el viernes, este viernes, this, this Friday, El viernes uh, camino en el parque. El miércoles camino en el parque. And I'm just saying it's going to happen this one Friday. El viernes camino en el parque on Friday. Okay. And now I'm going to say un hábito. Un hábito. Los sábados, los sábados... Uh, vemos una película 
con la familia. Los sábados vemos una pe película con la familia. Vemos, vemos, vemos una película. We watch a movie. Bien. Los sábados. On Saturdays. So, days of the week, we definitely, definitely use an article, okay, to say we do something on a day or on a bunch of days because you do it repeatedly, okay? It may be that. We also did a lot with time, and we're going to we did quite a bit with that last week, so we're going to leave that for a bit. Um, we're going to talk about this number two thing you see on the screen for him. He's got number two, discussing things in a general sense. This is a way in English where we skip the word the so often, but we may not skip the word the. What do you mean about hmm, general sense? Okay, here's what I mean about in general sense. And I am going to stop my share. I'm going to talk about things in a general sense. El bloqueador. El bloqueador. The sunscreen. If I want to say sunscreen is sticky, I don't mean this particular type. I mean all of it. I mean this is a category of thing. El bloqueador es pegoso, sticky, okay? And I'm talking about all of this stuff in general. We, where we would just say sunscreen is sticky, it'll be el bloqueador es pegoso, okay? Vale, sí. Uh, la pasta de dientes, la pasta de dientes. La pasta de dientes es necesaria. Toothpaste is necessary. See? I'm talking about any old kind of toothpaste. It doesn't matter that it's this particular kind. It's la pasta de dientes. La pasta paste, literally. La pasta de dientes, ¿sí? Uh, uh, la pasta de dientes es refrescante. Toothpaste is refreshing. Unless you... Marilyn? Yeah. Sí, sí. Tengo una pregunta. Sí, so sí. you say la, las pasta de dientes es necesaria? So it's a singular at the end, even though you use las? Yeah. Oh, but, well, no. La pasta de, oh, 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 dientes is. Uh-huh. So, but, but it's just pasta paste. Uh, so, so it's singular. So it's las, la pasta? La pasta. De, okay. Pasta de dientes. The de dientes just tells you what this paste is for. Mm-hmm. It's not paste that you stick in a, a okay. sauce you're making. It's paste that goes on here. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And de dientes just tells what purpose it's for. Mm -hmm. what, okay. La pasta de dientes. La pasta de dientes. Okay. Bien. Um, a ver, a ver. Um, I could say los dientes son necesarios, teeth are necessary. Yeah, I could say that too, but then it'll be necesarios. Los dientes son necesarios, sí. Los dientes, los dientes son importantes. I'm talking about teeth, right? Uh, teeth are important. I could talk about uh, your health is important. Health, health is an important thing. And when I say health, I mean, in English, we don't say the health is important, but in Spanish, you do. La salud es importante. Health is important. La buena salud, good health. La buena salud es importante. La buena salud es importante. And we wouldn't say the good health in English, but you're talking about health in general for any, any human being at all. So when I talk about health in a general way, I do need that word, the. La buena salud. La buena salud. 
Es importante. Sí, I could say. Uh, los libros son divertidos. Books are fun. Los libros son divertidos. Books are fun. Books are fun. Ok. Uh, vale, magnífico. Um, so, whenever we talk about uh, um, nouns in a general fashion, we tend to use the article. I'm going to have a couple other examples for you uh, up here. So, we're going to call up. Uh, Wait, let that. Aquí. Here we go. So, let's see how that might happen. You might be, uh, uh, you might say, I don't drive out of a sense of utility, but I drive for fun, okay? Uh, los carros deportivos, there is a category of things. Los carros deportivos, sports cars. Los carros deportivos son divertidos. They're fun. And I mean all sports cars, all of them as a big category. You would say in English, sports cars are fun. But in Spanish, you have to say it as the sports cars, los carros deportivos. Or conversely, if you say, I like sports cars, I like them. And I don't care what kind of sports car it is. I just like that category of vehicles. I don't like trucks. I don't like motorcycles. I like sports cars. I don't like station wagons. I don't like vans. <laughs> I like sports cars. Me gustan los carros deportivos. Me gustan, I like. They're pleasing to me. Me gustan. Me gustan los carros deportivos. Okay? We're going to talk about what we like or don't like. Um, a ver, I got way too many tabs open here. Uh, a ver, okay. Uh, let's say you want to say, I like German beer. I like German beer, right? I like German beer. And we would say in English, just German beer. You would never say, I like the German beer. You would say, I like German beer. I don't want Mexican beer. I don't want French beer, really. I don't want Aussie beer. I want German beer. Me gusta, see? Me, or I like. Me gusta la cerveza alemana. Me gusta la cerveza alemana. Me gusta means I like. It's pleasing to me. Me gusta. Me gusta are two words that go together. And they mean, they translate as the idea of I like, even though they don't mean I like. Me gusta means I like. Me gusta. Me gusta la cerveza alemana. I like German beer. I like that category of things. Okay. Vale. So we would just say German beer and they're going to use the word the. Uh, now I'm not going to say I like, but I'm going to say I love because it's way better than like. It's, an, it's a feeling that's more intense than me gusta. So instead me of encanta. me gusta, it becomes me encanta. me encanta. Me encanta. Me encanta, I'm enchanted by. And that means I love it. I love it. And you don't use the word love in Spanish. You say me encanta. Me encanta el chocolate. I like chocolate. In English, you would just say, I like chocolate. But we need the word the. Because you're talking about a whole category of things. And I don't care what brand it is. I don't care what make. I don't care what other additives it's got. I like chocolate. Me, me encanta, me encanta. I love it. Me encanta el chocolate. Me encanta el chocolate. Vale, bien? Uh, so anytime we use uh, los frijoles, beans. I know, los frijoles means the beans, okay? Uh, but if you want to say, uh, I don't like beans. I don't like beans. I don't like that category of food, okay? Because we're talking about it as a big category. It becomes no me gusta. No me gustan, now it's plural. No me gustan los frijoles. No me gustan los frijoles. I don't like beans. No me gustan los frijoles. 
I'm talking about this as a category of foods, okay? No me gustan los frijoles. In English, we would just say, I don't like beans, but it has to be the beans because you're talking about the whole category, anything that's in that general category. So when they talk to you about using uh, things, nouns, in a general sense, that's what they mean. If you are talking about the noun in a general sense, you do need to use the article in Spanish. We, we don't do that in English. Uh, you know, me gustan los perros. I like dogs. You mean that you like that category of pet, right? But they will use los or el or la or, you know, whatever the article is, right? Yeah. So uh, those are the articles. So this is a little website I'm going to give you as um, it's going to give you a reference and I'll give you the link to this. It's going to have um, using the definite article in Spanish and they start with saying things like, uh, well, sometimes using el lados or las favos is what you expect, like we would use it in English, but sometimes it doesn't. So they start off with this very first example, and they're going to give you all different kinds of categories of where we definitely need to use el la, los, las, where you're probably, you know, going to say, well, we don't do that in English. La comida de México es deliciosa. I'm going to try to make this a little bit bigger. Bien, mejor, better. And by the way, it's going to have a uh, little, little audio icon so that you can click on them and listen. La comida de México es deliciosa. We would say Mexican food because we're talking about that as a category, a type of cooking. So we're talking about that as a noun in general. La comida de México, Mexican food, es deliciosa. Los gatos son inteligentes. Cats are intelligent. Okay. Meaning all cats, cats in general, you know. Uh, bien, vale. Days of the week, we looked at that. Tengo que trabajar el lunes. I have to work on Monday, on this particular Monday. Or voy al gimnasio los lunes. I go to the gym on Mondays, meaning all of them. It's a habit. Linda, dime. And you'll have to take yourself off of me. Right. Yes. Um, can we go back to the beer example um, where we said we like a particular type of beer? But if I was saying, like, I like all beers, it would be me gusta toda los cervezas, right? The, the well, all would be. Okay. So let me, if, if you do that, you're generally going to keep it singular and you're just going to say, me gusta la cerveza. Okay. Me gusta la cerveza. I like beer. Okay. So like you, as opposed to liquor, as opposed to wine, as, yeah. Okay. So being specific as to what type of beer is not, the fact that it's beer is what makes us use the right. Right. not the thought that it's German beer. Okay. Right. Got it. Thank you. Right. Now you could be more specific and say, I like all types of beers. Me gustan, uh, me gustan todas las cervezas de, de todos los países. I like all the beers from all the different countries. You could get that specific. But, you know, generally, when you're just talking with somebody, you usually just say, well, I like beer, but I don't. Uh, me gusta, me gusta la cerveza, pero, but pero no me gusta el vino. I like beer, but I don't like wine in that sense. And it doesn't have to be super specific. Yeah. Okay. Pregunta. Pregunta. Sí, sí, dime. On, on the days of the week there, this is a little bit off, but you have, why would you have K there? Wouldn't it be tango, trabajar el lunes? Oh, okay. Que buena pregunta. What a good question. Tengo means I have, meaning yeah. my, ooh, tengo una taza de café, but tengo que, tengo que signals obligation to perform oh. something. Ah, and it, tengo que will always be followed by an infinitive, 
a verb that's not conjugated. And then it's going to indicate have to, have to, have to run, have to work, have to talk, have to, have to cook, have to write, have to read, whatever it is you have to do, have to sew, you know, have to scrub. <laughs> Tengo que fregar. I've got a scrub. Um, so tengo que, that is just a word combination. That word que there in tengo que, that word que won't translate to mean anything at all in English. It's just the word combination you need when we use tener to express obligation, must do something, have to. Okay, thank you. Then, okay, so when you talk about, we cannot translate word for word for word because uh, that, that idea of loss in translation is, is actually there. That word que in English won't mean anything at all, but it's the combination they use with that verb tener. So this is what they would call in that philosophy of uh, teaching a, a verb, uh, a chunk of words, okay? Tengo que, and an infinitive, tengo que trabajar, tengo que caminar, tengo que hablar, tengo que escribir, tengo que escuchar, tengo que, tengo que leer, tengo que leer, okay, tengo que estudiar, tengo que, tengo que, I have to, I have to, I have to. And now you're saying not I own something, like I have a pen, but I have to do this activity. Bien, bueno, Mariana, sí. Okay, vale, magnífico. So, we use these of days of the week. Uh, but notice, tengo que trabajar el lunes on Monday. Voy al gimnasio los lunes. I have to go to gyms on, I go to the gym on Mondays. I go to the gym on Mondays, meaning now it's a habit. It's every single Monday. Uh, on Mondays or on Monday, one of them. But, if I say today is Monday, today is Tuesday, I don't use the L. Hoy es lunes. Hoy es lunes. Okay. And quite often, quite often, I'm not going to say always because that isn't true. Quite often, we drop that little word L once it's trailing after that word S. You're going to, we're going to come back and look at that later in a bit. Um, there is one rule uh, the video gave you, which is just a touch off, and I'm gonna show you what. He had mentioned in the video, I asked you to finish, uh, that, um, that when we use languages, we do use the article. And that's usually true, but there's an exception. So let's look at that. When we talk about languages and we're using them as a, a subject of the sentence, we do use the L. So things like this, I'm saying Japanese and German are difficult languages. El japonés y el alemán son lenguas difíciles. Japanese and German are difficult languages and, and you're gonna get the whole link to go to this site so you don't really need to cut, write this down. Uh, uh, el español me gusta muchísimo. Or you might flip the order of the words and say, me gusta mucho el español. Me, gu me gusta mucho el español. You may flip el español to the back of that sentence. Then we do use el, but notice when you say, I speak Spanish, I want to learn Spanish, yeah? Now we're generally dropping that, you know, yeah? Uh, hablo español, hablo español. You don't need to say hablo el español. So that little disclaimer he gave you in the video where he said, you know, always use el with a language. We don't really do that so much with hablo español. Hablo español. Uh, aprendo español. I'm learning Spanish. Quiero aprender español. I want to learn Spanish. Yeah, it'll probably just be español. Let's look at this one, which is next. Ooh, body parts. Here is a biggie. In Spanish, we use el, la, los, or las with body parts, where in English we say my, they don't. 
they use the quite often. Very, very seldom do they say my hand. <laughs> they say the hand. So another time when we do use el la los or las is with body parts. Yeah, so me duele, which means it's hurting me. Me duele el estómago. You would say my stomach hurts. You won't say my stomach. It'll be el estómago. Me duele el estómago. Me duele el estómago. It won't be my, it'll be the. So these are again examples where we put the in and you typically wouldn't you say the in English. Me duele el estómago. Si no traes la camisa fajada, uh, uh, no puedes entrar. Uh, why does she use that with shirt? Oh, because they have clothing. Yeah. Uh, if, sure, if your shirt isn't tucked in, you can't come in. That's kind of complicated. But, um, por ejemplo, um, tengo, tengo la camisa, tengo la camisa uh, blanca hoy. Okay. Uh, but, Parts of the body. So let's focus a little bit on parts of the body because that's a little more of the focus I want to have. Um, um, remember how when you had descriptions and you wanted to say somebody has uh, blue eyes, the, the phrase was tiene, he has or she has, tiene los ojos azules. Tiene los ojos azules. He has blue eyes. Tiene los ojos azules. You would not say he has the blue eyes, but because we're using a body part, we do use los. Tiene los ojos azules. Tiene, tiene el pelo, el pelo moreno. Tiene el pelo moreno. Um, Tiene el pelo rubio, if somebody has blonde hair. I don't have blonde hair, right? El pelo rubio. So parts of the body, uh, parts of the body, we tend to use el la los o las. Almost all the time. So you're going to see that. Okay. Oh, telling time. We did a whole bunch with that uh, last week. I have another uh, pregunta oh, on, easy, on, on time. This is, I'm sure that you've told us this, but I must've forgotten. Uh, no, you said una is feminine because uh, time is feminine. Is there, is any other, is it una the only one that goes feminine masculine? Do any of the others do that oh. too? Oh, oh, with telling time. Oh. what? Or just in general, just in yes. general. In telling time, you're always going to use la for hour one or right. las for all the other hours. Right. Because, because the hour comes first. See? Es la una, it's one o'clock. It's more about the una, the number, uno versus una. Uh, yeah, the, yeah, una, oh, I see. Okay, that it's not, not the la part, but the una part. Right, right. That's it's because the number you're talking, the number you're using refers to an hour and the word hour is feminine, correct. But don't, do any other of the numbers do that change from masculine to um, feminine? Feminine? If you're talking about an all feminine group, uh, so, if I say, well, okay, let me back that up because more complicated than you think. Okay. For double digit numbers, no. Uh, there are 50 women. There are 50 women in this club. Hay, hay 50 mujeres, but 50 is always 50. Okay, yeah. The only, the only numbers that go feminine are numbers like una, <laughs> uh, numbers like the hundreds, but numbers like 50, 60, 70, 80 don't go, they are just what they are. Okay. But num the hundreds can go feminine. I, if I say there are 200 women in this club, hay 200 mujeres. En el club, 
Okay. Hay, there are. Hay 200 mujeres en el club. Yes. But very seldom. Very seldom do numbers go feminine. Very seldom. Okay. Okay. On Thank rare you. occasions. Okay. Uh, long form possession. And I'll let you look at that later because I want to move on. Um, um, when talking about someone, this one is kind of important. Titles is kind of important. So if I talk about somebody and I use a title and a title means Mr., Mrs., Miss, Dr., Professor, okay, <clears throat> words like that, titles that show respect or status in some way, those, if I'm talking about the person, we do use the word the, so the examples you see are el doctor Hernández es inteligente, Dr. Hernández is intelligent. La señora Cuevas tiene una casa bonita. Mrs. Cuevas has a pretty house. Uh, if I talk about the person, I do use el and la with their title. But if I talk to them directly, I drop the word el or la. Okay. So if you're talking to Dr. Er, uh, el Dr. Hernández, you will, speaking to that, you say, oh, good morning, Dr. Hernandez. Ah, buenos dias, Dr. Hernandez. Buenos dias, doctor. It won't be buenos dias, el doctor. It'll be just buenos dias, doctor, because you're talking to him, right? Or buenos dias, senora Cuevas, right? But it's only when I talk about somebody that I include that word, the. That's kind of an odd thing there. Uh, yeah. And I will send this to you because it'll give you a little quiz. Ooh, when you get done reading all of this, you can click on the start quiz now. I, yeah, and it will tell you if you're right or wrong. Be prepared. Be prepared on this quiz because you guys have, are less experienced. Be prepared to, if you get about 60% right, you're doing great. Expect to get about 40% wrong because they're going to throw some tricky ones in there. I'm just saying. The things you shouldn't miss are things like titles, talking to somebody versus about them. Uh, days of the week are good ones to not miss. But uh, do be prepared. You're going to get some things wrong and they'll give you a little explanation when you get it wrong, you know, why you get it wrong and how to fix it. Game? Okay? Mommy? Okay. Ah, uh, fantastico. Uh, <laughs> los números me dan dolor de cabeza. Yeah, numbers give me a headache too sometimes for all kinds of reasons. Okay. Uh, a ver, let's move on to some practice. We're going to move on to some smaller group practice. Smaller group practice. Um, I'm going to move away from. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to move away from articles right now. And. Um, boom, 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 or, or not. Yeah. Do you want us to do some small group practice with articles or not? Or we're just, oh, wait, I asked you to prepare for what you do on specific days, didn't I? Yes, we're going to take that first and then we're going to move into our receipt thing. Okay, está bien, good? Okay, um, I am going to section people off so that some of you go off and I, what we're going to do first is the first thing you prepped, which was uh, talking about uh, talking about what you do on certain days of the week. So I do want you to use el with the day of the week, or if you mean every single day, like every single Wednesday, every single Friday, then use los, right? Uh, I'm going to put you out into breakout rooms. I'm going to take the less experienced people with me. Ooh, cuántos, cuántas personas somos. Ah, bien. I'm going to put you probably in groups of about uh, three 
her group. Y perdón. Oh, big mistake. Okay. Perdón. Pardon me for my. Get out of that altogether. Ah, that won't let me. Okay. <sighs> Oof. I'm sorry, I've got to do this by hand and it's taking way longer than I want to take. So bear with me here. I'm trying to get all the newbie people into one group. Okay. And now I'm gonna to have to assign. Uh, yeah. And there's going to be one group of two. Okay, now I'm going to open them up and I'm going to take the newbie people for just a quickie lesson on our own. You'll hit, need to hit your join button. And I think I've got this right. Yeah. Okay, we've got people going off. Fantastico. Okay, we've got time just for us guys. Excelente, excelente. ¿Qué vamos a hacer? Uh, do you think you're ready to do a little bit with uh, activities? Like using a specific verb to say that you do something on a day? Does anybody want to take a, a, a give a trial with something? Uh, okay, hey, bueno, Bill. Carolyn, I, oh, I had a I have one written out here, but there's a question with it. Okay, that's <laughs> and all right. I, I'll try to I'll try to say the sentence. Las lunas por las mañanas tengo clase de, de español. Now, the por las mañanas. Could you discuss that? Just por las mañanas. Bit? Yeah. Por, why? Por why? La... It's, why it would be like that? Okay. Yeah. C C C Roger. Por la ah. Los, uh, I'm sorry, los lunes, los lunes uh, por las, por la mañana, ¿sí? Los yeah. lunes por la mañana tengo clase de español. Oh, or is it por, is, yeah, is it por las mañanas? Por la mañana, por la mañana, in the morning. In the morning. Well, yeah, or I was, maybe I was trying to say in the mornings. Uh, you can, but. It's easier to shorten it down to por la mañana because it tells the time of day. Boom. Okay. When you mean a.m., a dot m dot, <laughs> a.m., it's por la mañana. When you mean any time after noon, it's por la tarde. When you mean any time in the evening when the sun is down, it's por la noche. Boom. That's it. Okay. Los lunes, tengo clase de español. Or los lunes por la mañana. Los lunes por la mañana. Okay. On Mondays in the morning. Si? ¿Sí? Tengo clase okay. de español. Yeah, Excelente. Por, por la. Uh, the, the por, por la, la tarde, por, por la noche. Yeah. If it, uh, por, por la tarde just means after 12 o'clock yeah. noon. That's all. Yeah. Oh, okay. Por la noche means after the sun is set. So anytime after 7.30-ish, 7 o'clock-ish, you start using por la noche. That's all. Okay. And you just need to know that string of words. Por la mañana means in the morning. 
por la noche. And it just is that. And don't try to like overanalyze it. Instead of por la noche, can you also say de la tarde? Or de la noche? Sometimes we use de la tarde. Okay. Oh, que buena pregunta. Um, okay. De la tarde is used when we're telling the time. Like, uh, son, ooh, or I'm going to, uh, son la, oh, son las tres de la tarde. Son las tres de la tarde. It's three I have in the a good afternoon. example of that. Um, so for mine, I said, los martes y jueves hago yoga at las cuatro de la tarde. So at 4 uh, p.m. Okay. Uh, uh, and, and now you're going to pronounce that hago yoga. Hago yoga. Hago right. yoga. We're, hago, hago yoga. Hago yoga. A las, and was it tres? A las tres. Um, a, a, a las cuatro cinco. de la tarde. A las cuatro de la tarde. Okay, so Bill, here's a good example. Hago yoga a las cuatro de la tarde. Hago yo yoga, I do yoga. Hago yoga a las cuatro de la tarde. A las cuatro de la tarde is appropriate. De la tarde is when we say at an hour or it is a certain time. Mm. Okay. Por la mañana is in the morning, but notice I have no time peg to it. Just in the morning. Por la mañana is in the morning. Por la tarde is at night, but I'm not giving a time. I'm not giving this number to it. When I don't assign a number to it, it's por la mañana, por la tarde, por la noche. Does that make more sense? Yes, but can I run this by you as Exacto. part of my uh, scenario? Uh, uh, yo, you go, fuego, I should say. Fuego, el deporte de pickleball. Todas las semana, semanas, los yeah. lunes a las cuatro por la tarde y los miércoles y los viernes por la mañana. Okay, por la mañana is great because you're not assigning a number to it. But uh, a las cuatro de la tarde, when I have an a las cuatro de la tarde, then I need needs to be de la tarde. I'm gonna uh, make something out for this group of folks that you see that difference of when to use it as de la tarde or por la tarde. And, and the key is gonna be, if I assign it a number, then it's de la mañana or de la noche or de la tarde. But if I just say morning and I don't assign it a number, then, yeah, it's por la tarde. I'll, I'll give you something. Now I understand why you have these questions. And I will assign you a little something to do, to practice with over the week to get that straight. Again, de right. nada, de nada. Okay. Because it's not as complicated as you think. If you assign it a number, right, uh, then it's de la mañana, right? If you just say in the morning and you don't give it a number off the clock, then por la mañana. Okay. So, Marilyn, how, how is D, E, or day and por, how, how are those words, uh, what do they translate to in English? Uh, which words? De, de, yeah, day and por. De and por. De means of or from. Por means a list of words about that long. Oh. It's por means for, through, by, by means of, uh, 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 via. Uh. No, don't worry about that. Don't worry about what por means and what de means. Do worry a little bit about what de means. De means of or from. Boom, that's it. Okay. It's very clear cut. Of or from. But what I want, what, what I will give you practice with is when is it appropriate to string it together as de la mañana versus por la mañana. When is it appropriate to use that string of words together 
in what situations? Because it's going to be pretty clear cut. Okay. okay? Marilyn, yeah. can I run my, can I C -C -C. run this you? Exacto. I'll try to get it out correctly. Yo limpio la casa muchas veces a la semana. Okay. Muchas veces a la semana, many times in the week. Yes. Si. Okay. Bien. Okay. Bien. Limpio la casa. I clean the house. Anybody else got a chore? Pat got a chore? Um, hablo con mi hermana los domingos de la mañana. Ah, uh, los, los domingos. Sí. Hablo con mi hermana. I talk with my sister. Hablo con mi hermana los domingos on Sundays, meaning she does it every single Sunday. Por la mañana, in the morning. So notice this, Roger. She didn't say what time. She just said on Sundays. Right. Por la mañana. And now she's saying in the mornings. Not assigning a number to it, but just in the mornings, before noontime. Bien? Okay. Okay, fantástico. Otros ejemplos. Other examples of activities? I have mine, but it's basically the same thing that everyone else has done. Estar bien, okay. that's good. Okay. Mi grupo de conversación, si Riabe, is that how you say it? Riabe meets uh, los miércoles a las nueve de la mañana. Okay. A las nueve de la mañana. So notice, Roger, a las nueve de la mañana. She assigned a number, so it's de la mañana because she assigned it a number. A las nueve de la mañana. She assigned it a specific number time. De la mañana. Bien. Uh, nos reunimos. We get together. Or nos uh, encontramos. We get together. Is probably the best okay. one for yeah. that. See? Or nos. practicamos. We practice. Practicamos. Practicamos was too hard for me to say. Practicamos. No, it's not. Practicar. Practicar. Okay, there you go. Try it again That's there. Practicamos. 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 That's Excellent. easier. Sí. Nos practicamos. Sí. Okay. Gracias. Uh, por ejemplo, por ejemplo, usamos vinagre, usamos vinagre en la ensalada. Usamos, sí, usamos, usamos vinagre en la, sí, eh, uh, usamos vinagre en la ensalada um, uh, los, los martes. On Tuesdays, we put this in our salad, por ejemplo, sí, uh, por ejemplo, sí, en, eh, a ver. A ver, uy, ¿qué más? ¿Qué más? Uh, otro ejemplo. Otro ejemplo sería, another example would be, uh, uh, lim, limpiamos la casa, limpiamos la casa los sábados. Limpiamos la casa los sábados por la mañana, in the morning time. Bien. O... Uh, llamamos, llamamos, llamamos a la familia, uh, llamamos a la familia los domingos a las nueve. And now I gave it at nine o'clock. And now I gave it a definite time. Okay, vale. Hay más ejemplos. More examples? Sí o no? Sí. Yeah. See, yeah. okay. Um, I did one also like I'm talking when we take Spanish, but I said differently. I said, los lunes y mercoles aprendo español. Perfecto. So I los learned Spanish lunes. on Mondays and Wednesdays. Perfecto, perfecto. Muy bien, muy bien. Hay más ejemplos, more examples. Si sí o no? I've got another one. Los okay. Mar la las martes tengo una clase de cocina. Ah, perfecto. Los martes tengo una clase de cocina. I've got a cooking class on Tuesdays. Excelente. Sí, muy bien. Muy bien. OK, Bill. Uh, yo juego el ajedrez internet Ooh. todos los días. 
Bien. Juego al ajedrez por internet. Now, here's an interesting use of por, Roger. Por internet means on the internet. By means of the internet instead of in person. Okay. Uh, todos los días. Every day. Todos los días. All the days. Todos los días. Perfecto. Perfecto. Muy bien. Okay. Vale. Mejor? Better? Sí. Hay más? More? Sí. No? Nada? Okay. I'm going to leave the room. I'm going to bring everybody back. Uh, I'm back now. Okay. There we go. See ya. See ya. Marilyn, are you talking? Perdón. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you very, very, very much. Ha! I have to remember too, because I came in out of the Zoom room, I have to unmute myself. Muchísimas gracias. Vale, bueno, vamos a empezar. We're going to begin. We are going to run out of time to do very much with numbers, but we're going to kind of review that and maybe pick up with that again um, next week. Here comes everybody. Aquí vienen todos. Here comes everybody. Uh, vale, muy bien. Okay. Um, I hope you had some good examples. Uh, if you've got any questions, ask me now before. We're, we're not going to get in getting quite as far with the numbers as I hope to, but we will, and should take yourselves off of mute. Um, any questions you had from the practice that you did, see or no? Um, no? Marilyn, I have a question here. Okay. So how do you want to combine? Like, you know, I know that you can also say it the way it is, but maybe there is a, a way to combine some sentences in Spanish. For example, like, you know, um, I'm making this sentence, um, sentences, uh, preparo desayuno por mi, mis hijos a las seis y cuarto de la mañana y por um, mi esposo a las ocho de la mañana todos días de la semana. So is there any way to combine, like, you know, you don't have to use pour two times or, ah, or that one is okay. I see what you are saying. Okay, let's pull up a whiteboard for this question. Because that will probably be the easiest thing. Okay, so first of all, instead of por, you're gonna use para. Oh, para. Here's okay. the first thing, para. Por and para is a big question. Por and para, uh, who, well, think of it as, Juanita, think of it as if you're fixing something, who's going to be the end game? Who's going to be receiving that desayuno, breakfast? Your family members, right? Correct. And because they are the destination, <laughs> because <laughs> that's where the, the, it ends up, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we use para, we use okay. para because that indicates, oh, it's going to these people, okay? So para in this case means for, and uh, not for, oh, for, meaning that there is a recipient, somebody is getting that, okay? So um, you could say, and, and first of all, let's do it this way. When I wanna say, I do this every day, 
Um, you can tag it at the end or at the beginning, but I think it ties it up a little bit more neatly to just start off with, let's bring that up to the front. Those of the us. So now somebody knows, oh, I do this every day and it's gonna be for everybody here. So, ah. todos los días, preparo, eh, uh, preparo el desayuno uh, para, uh, uh, para mis hijos, uh, pa preparo mi, mi el desayuno. And I would just pause, because this is usually how it winds up being, um, uh, para mis hijos, a las seis y cuarto. Y para mi esposo, a las seis y media, por ejemplo. Okay, I don't know if I picked the exact same times you've got, but, uh, you know, maybe you want to say 7.30 instead. Y para mi esposo a las siete y media. I mean, there are a number of ways you can combine those. There are a number of ways that are okay. Uh, but kind of paraphrasing it would be pretty normal like that, or just breaking it down would be really normal. Um, this is another situation where you might throw a less word in front of preparo, but you don't have to. Todos los días preparo el desayuno. Every day I fix breakfast. Ah, para mis hijos a las seis y uh, cuarto, y para mi esposo a las siete y media. You're just giving different timelines for the two different groups, right? All right. Easiest way to do that. Okay. Yeah, rather than having to repeat. Okay, again. so I get it. So I don't have to mention de la, de la mañana because you prepare desayuno. So that means breakfast. Somebody's, you know it's yeah. in the morning. Okay, got it. Okay, so you know what? I could say de la mañana. I can't do that. But I probably don't have to repeat. Yeah, everybody yeah. knows your breakfast yes, is in the breakfast morning. breakfast is in the morning, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. oh, because... Because you said it was breakfast, people know that anyway. Yeah. Can you put in de la mañana? Sure you can, but you don't have to. Right. It's kind of icing on the cake, you know? It's extra, yeah. but somebody's still going to understand you. They're going to understand you if you leave out de la mañana or if you stick in de la mañana because you've got the word desayuno and everybody knows breakfast. Yep. Bien. Okay, Fantástico. gracias. De nada, gracias. de nada. Okay, vale, bueno. Hay más preguntas, more questions. And I'm sorry, we did not get to our receipts today, perdón. Uh, we did not get to receipts, so I apologize for that. Uh, we're gonna save those receipt thing to start off with next week. We're gonna use our receipt thing with numbers to start off next week. But you know, Mariana had a great, great question about numbers, and I hadn't thought to include that idea. Um, numbers, are something that generally stay in one form. And so we're gonna kind of focus on that a little bit. Uh, we're gonna review a lot of numbers. I'll probably send you a video to work on numbers a little bit as homework so that we can prep a little more for this receipt thing. We're gonna talk about what things cost next week. So we're gonna take that. We're gonna shift away from the articles a little bit. I'll give you the website to uh, give you all those rules about using el la los las okay and that little quiz to kind of quiz yourself don't be surprised if you only score it about 60 percent correct because they're going to give you lots of tricky examples uh, but it, it helps you a little bit to get some of the general examples and then we're, we're going to dive back into the whole numbers thing and i'll give you an extra video to talk about numbers and give you examples with numbers okay numbers in general most of the time, we're only going to use in one form. That a la una thing is kind of an exception. Una can go, can indicate one for a feminine thing. But most of the times when we use numbers like dos, tres, veinte, treinta, cuarenta, cincuenta, cien, yeah, cien, sesenta, Generally, those kind of numbers don't go into feminine forms. The hundred 
hundred one zero zero forms might go into feminine forms, but you know what? Very rarely. And when we're talking about prices of things, you're really always going to use just the number, just the number. So that's what we're going to focus on, kind of a review of numbers. So save that receipt thing. We're going to do that as our lead off conversation next week. And I'll give you some number things to, to work on. Uh, Roger had a great question in our beginner group, which I think is really going to be a benefit for everybody. We've got phrases like de la mañana or por la mañana. And people get confused. When do I use one or the other? I'll give you some guidelines. I'll give you some homework to check into. Why do we use one versus the other? Um, I think I've got a video that explains it, but if I can't find that exact thing, I'm going to make sure I've got like a little cheat sheet thing to help you to know when to use it. And the only thing important that's important to know is that know how the chunk of words de la mañana is used versus how the chunk of words por la mañana is used when we want to indicate a.m. versus p.m. versus late at night. And I'll give you some cues and examples to help you with that. It's not important for you to break it down into the separate words of de la mañana. Learn it as a, a string of words, de la mañana, and a string of words, por la mañana. De la tarde versus por la tarde, a chunk of words. And I'm going to give you a little homework on that when to distinguish to use them. Are we good? Okay. And do your general reading. See, está bien. And we should be, I think we're going to be good with that. That'll be enough for us. And we'll come back and, and hit the numbers kind of hard next week. Bien? Sí. Bien. Gracias. Fantástico. Bueno, entonces nos vemos. Espero que tengan una semana fantástica. I hope you guys have a great week. Adios. Muy bien, sí, hasta luego. Gracias. Gracias. Hasta luego. Gracias. Gracias. Sí, que, hasta luego. Que, sí, que la pasen bien. Have a good one.